Hello everyone. It's another beautiful Wednesday with clear skies, warm weather, all the temptations that make one want to go outside and forget the rules and hang out in the park, have a picnic, walk on the beach. So try to resist the temptation. Uh, I often go walking at night under the stars. Recently I got up at four in the morning and walked so that I could go see the conjunction of uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, and the moon. And um, it's always beautiful to see what God is doing in the heavens. And stargazing, I think, helps put things in perspective. In classical antiquity, or late antiquity, and throughout the Middle Ages, a theologian was expected to know astronomy. And some of our greatest astronomers started their studies as theologians. Um, I may be wrong about this, but I think Copernicus was one of them. And so, what is it about the stars that's important? We realize the grandeur of what God can do and how small we are. And that can be intimidating and mysterious, but it can also relieve us because we see that his power is limitless. The one who fashioned the stars and the sun and the moon is fashioning you and me in our faith. Uh, during this time, I think... Uh, we're going to learn a lot about perspective. The other morning I saw Antares, um, reddish star, it, it's a, it was in the southern sky. And it, it just looks like a red star, but that thing is, I forget if it's thousands or millions of times bigger than our sun. We think we have perspective, but we often don't. So, turning to God and turning to his word is a wonderful way to get back to what is most important. And I'm going to read Psalm 19 today, and after that I want to read two passages from 1 Timothy that I hope will give you hope and faith and will help you to reorient yourself uh, and... Find strength in our Savior. So let's read Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes forth like a bridegroom leaving his chamber. And like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them. And there is nothing hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is the servant warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern his errors? Clear thou me from hidden faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my rock. And my Redeemer. That's a beautiful psalm. It's always going to be one of my favorites. And 
I would like to read from 1 Timothy. If I can find it. Okay. So 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 to the end. Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of our religion. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. And later he says, uh, Train yourself in godliness. This is chapter 4, verse 7. Train yourself in godliness, for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance. For to this end we toil and strive because we have our hopes set on the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. I actually want to read that in a different translation uh, because I think it's more powerful that way. So, but he's speaking of this sense of godliness being the most important thing. God became human so that we could become like God. Uh, that's the core of our faith. Uh, this magnificent awe-inspiring gift um, that we didn't merit in any way. We're broken, limited, confused human beings. Yet, the Lord gave us a path to godliness through Jesus. And that's what I think Paul is writing about in 1 Timothy. So I'm going to reread those two passages from uh, 1 Timothy 3 and 4. Uh, it says, Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. And he says, um, In verse 6 of chapter 4, if you put these things before the brothers, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, being trained in the words of the faith and of the good doctrine that you have followed. Have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, for to this end we toil and strive because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. Those are beautiful words, and I believe they speak to us of what's most important in this life. Nothing will eclipse the significance, the importance, the meaningfulness of godliness, whereby God has invited us into his salvation, his friendship, his divine life, his eternity. And he did that through self-sacrifice, through the work of Jesus on the cross and in the resurrection. My prayer is that as we continue to be strong and safe during this epidemic, this global pandemic, our hearts will open to what is most important. And I think that is what we just read about. Let us pray. Oh God, we ask for your mercy. We pray that you will bring an end to this pandemic that has cost so many lives and has wreaked havoc on economies and diplomatic relations. Lord, we pray for strength for all the leaders. You will give them wisdom, humility, and compassion. That you will give them strength and backbone to do what is right. 
and we pray that you will guide them in all ways. Lord, we pray for your faithful throughout the world, that they will put aside all that hinders us from growth in the Holy Spirit, that you will help us to abandon what is not essential, what is harmful, what is pointless and shallow. Lord, open our hearts to the seed of your word. Open our hearts to the work of your Holy Spirit. Open our hearts to the great mystery of godliness. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. So may God bless you and keep you this week. Stay strong, stay in the word. And I have no doubt that the Lord will come to your assistance. God bless you.